In February 2006, the feared terrorist Abu Musab al-Zarqawi carried out one of his bloodiest attacks, transforming the Shiite mosque al-Askari into smoldering ruins. What you're seeing is footage captured on the day of that infamous attack. Since the 1990s, al-Zarqawi had been one of the most prominent names within al-Qaeda, second only to Osama bin Laden. Eliminating him at all costs was an absolute priority for Washington. The opportunity finally came in June 2006, but it didn't involve a secret operation or a silent sniper. Instead, it was a brutal airstrike carried out by the US Navy's F-16 Fighting Falcon aircraft. In this new video from Military Aviation, we want to delve into the best-kept secrets of the United States to understand how the assassination of al-Zarqawi was executed. Abu Musab al-Zarqawi was born in 1966, 30 kilometers east of Amman, Jordan. He is believed to have come from a Bedouin tribe called Beni Hassam, which is scattered throughout the Middle East. At the age of 17, he dropped out of school and turned to a life of crime. In 1989, he traveled to Afghanistan to join the anti-Soviet insurgency, which was partly led by the infamous terrorist Osama bin Laden. From then on, Zarqawi steadily rose through the ranks of Islamic terrorism to become the most wanted man in Jordan and Iraq, having participated in or planned various attacks against the Iraqi and Jordanian governments and U.S. troops. His influence in the region was so significant that the United States offered a $25 million reward for information leading to his capture, the same amount offered later for bin Laden. In this context, capturing or killing this terrorist leader was an absolute priority for Washington. The problem was that the terrorists' whereabouts were a genuine mystery, much like his career in the Middle East. Nobody knew for certain where he resided, as he frequently changed locations without leaving a trace. However, General Stanley McChrystal, the commander of the International Security Assistance Force in Afghanistan, was confident that finding him was only a matter of time. We didn't know where he was. But by that time, even in, amongst ourselves we talked, we said, we're gonna get him. But how do you catch such an elusive man? With a bit of luck and a lot of ingenuity. What you're seeing is the last video sent by Zarqawi to his followers, soldiers, and enemies. It shows him firing weapons and giving orders to his men. It doesn't appear to be particularly interesting material, just another audiovisual threat from a terrorist leader. However, behind this recording are revealing details that culminated in the impressive airstrike carried out by the F-16s. The surroundings and vegetation surrounding the terrorist were crucial clues to determine the approximate location of his hideout. With a combination of military intelligence, botany, and the assistance of willing civilian citizens to guide American soldiers, the search for Zarqawi finally yielded concrete results. What followed were 17 weeks of intense searches that narrowed down the possibilities to Bakuba, a small town north of the Iraqi capital. On June 7, 2006, an American officer was monitoring surveillance drones flying over the Bakuba region, 65 kilometers north of Baghdad. On the screens, he saw one of al-Zarqawi's associates behaving conspicuously. This is how General McChrystal described that tense moment. He left his house in Baghdad, did a number of things, did a number of what we call counter-surveillance techniques, switching vehicles. And then as soon as he got to this dwelling and drove up the driveway to this house, a guy came out and met him dressed in all black, which was Abu Musab al-Zarqawi's signature look, the Johnny Cash look, and he came to the end of this driveway. He looked left and right to see if anybody was there, and he turned and walked back. And when we saw that, we said, that's it. He's there. That's Zarqawi. After a few minutes, the ground command ordered the bombing of the marked residents. The aircraft chosen for the mission were the legendary F-16 Fighting Falcons, versatile fighters that played a crucial role in U.S. operations in the Middle East. While these units have been in service since the mid-1970s, the most modern version in the fleet at the time of the attack was the F-16 Block 5052. 
This variant had been equipped with an enhanced GPS-INS and incorporated AGM-88 Harm, JDAM, and JSOW missiles into its arsenal. With a length of 14.8 meters and a wingspan of 9.8 meters, this machine can take off with a maximum weight of up to 19,200 kilograms, allowing it to carry a wide variety of ordnance. In total, among its 11 hardpoints, it can use a combination of general-purpose bombs such as the Mark 84, 83, and 82, weighing 900, 450, and 225 kilograms, respectively. For high-precision operations, it can also launch laser-guided bombs like the GBU-10 and GBU-12 Paveway, as well as satellite-guided units like GBU-JDM and SDB. In this case, a large repertoire of missiles and rockets is available, but the type of operation carried out to kill Zarqawi required only the use of classic and lethal models. Two F-16s from the United States Air Force dropped two types of guided bombs weighing 225 kilograms, a GBU-12 Paveway 2 and a GBU-38. The first of these uses a laser system, which is why it's called a smart bomb because it can hit any target. Additionally, they employ what's known as bang-bang to orient themselves, meaning they use fins to completely modify their trajectory, correcting errors in the initial launch. As for the GBU-38, it's equipped with a JDAM kit, which stands for Joint Direct Attack Munition, a low-cost kit produced by Boeing that can turn various older models into smart bombs. As you can see in this footage taken by the fighter jets themselves, the impact of the ordnance was immediate and completely lethal to the building. According to George Casey, commander of U.S. forces in the region, the strike was carried out at 1815, and within minutes, Iraqi police arrived at the scene. Casey celebrated the success of the attack, but he also pointed out that the terrorist organization still posed a significant threat. Its operational structure was not strictly vertical, it operated in a cellular manner. While the death of one of its key leaders was a severe blow, it was far from a fatal one. In that fireball, nearly a dozen people died, including the infamous terrorist and his lieutenant and spiritual advisor, Abd al-Rahman. It was the locals who collaborated with the military forces to point out the hiding place among the rubble and smoke. There, American soldiers made an unexpected discovery. In addition to the body of the terrorist leader, a very close collaborator of al-Qaeda, Qudair Abbas al-Jaburi, was found alive, who could provide valuable information to the occupying forces. Despite being carried out with Uncle Sam's F-16s, the news of al-Zarqawi's death was not announced by the United States, as was customary in such cases, but by Nuri al-Maliki, Iraq's prime minister, a Shiite close to the government of Iran, a country that was also a sworn enemy of the terrorist killed during the airstrike. Within minutes, Zarqawi's organization confirmed the fall of its leader and reaffirmed jihad, or holy war, against those they considered enemies of Islam. Meanwhile, in the United States, then-President George Bush celebrated the heavy blow to the terrorist structure. Good morning. Now Zarqawi has met his end, and this violent man will never murder again. Zarqawi is dead. But the difficult and necessary mission in Iraq continues. We can expect the terrorists and insurgents to carry on without him. We can expect the sectarian violence to continue. Yet the ideology of terror has lost one of its most visible and aggressive leaders. As expected by former President Bush, the death of this terrorist leader was not the end of Al-Qaeda, although the airstrike carried out by the F-16s was celebrated by the United States and NATO as a significant victory. From that operation, all that remains to remember is the surgical precision of the guided bombs dropped by the Fighting Falcons and how they eliminated one of the most wanted men from the face of the Earth. That brings us to the end of this video. If you're interested in learning more about the most impressive air missions, we invite you to subscribe and activate notifications. For now, we bid farewell until the next installment of Military Aviation.